Let's talk about the work done by a varying force. And now we're going to do now something that we've been doing uh, since the beginning of the school year. Um, we're, see, work is force times displacement. And let's just use, let's just stipulate the forces in the x direction. This is delta x. Okay, just to make things simple. Well, notice that I've got a product here of two quantities to get another quantity. Now, think about what we've done every time we've seen that. Uh, every time we've seen that, uh, we draw a graph. That this can be represented graphically. Now, for example, let's say that uh, our force, let's say a, a force is a constant force, and it's going to be 3 newtons. And we're going to apply that through a displacement of 5 meters. So what we can do is graph this. Now, why would you? I don't know. It'd be a silly thing to do. It's not really necessary, but that's OK. We're going to do it anyway. So here's our force, 1, 2, 3 newtons. And this will be, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 meters. This is our, uh, our displacement, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 meters. And uh, so, well, hey, look, it's a constant 3. doesn't matter. Here, here we have a constant force. And that was applied through 5 meters. And I think it's easy to see. Obviously, the work done here is uh, 3 newtons times 5 meters. The work is, drum roll please, 15 newton meters, which is 15 joules. Now we know that's the answer, obviously. But, but take a look at this graph. Again, when you multiply 3 times 5, you're really getting the area of a rectangle. And so we can say that each little square of area underneath this graph, if I just look at a representative square, and there's one that's got a width of one meter and a height of one newton. When you apply one times one is one, so each little square represents a joule of work done. So we can say that the the area under a force versus displacement or a force versus position because you're, you're going to deal with displacements here anyway the the width of that is a displacement even if it if you start at the origin of position it's still a displacement of five meters um, the area under a force versus displacement graph represents work. This is a big idea. Okay. Now, uh, what we've done whenever we've uh, been dealing with graphs is that, uh, you know, sometimes we have graphs where you know the force is going to vary it's not going to stay the same as displacement goes by so you could have a force versus displacement that might look something like this let's just goof around with this So you might have a force that applies a constant force and then increases to some maximum force and then drops to zero. You might have some machine mechanism or something that has a force uh, that does something like this. Well, what would you do? Well, you'd break it up into areas. And you know, here we have, uh, well, maybe not like that. I don't know. Doesn't really matter how you break it up into rectangles and triangles or whatever, you add up all the area of all of these shapes and when you do you've got the total work done. Of course 
really what we're doing when we multiply, uh, when we find the area underneath the graph, is we're really doing integration. And that's how, uh, what we're going to do. Now, we're going to use integration to define work. Here we have work, and we have delta x, and uh, you might have a shape that kind of looks like this. And maybe you want to know how much work did we do between this position? I mean, actually, maybe I'll just make this the position axis instead of delta x. You know, position, but we're going to deal with a delta x. So, whoops, 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 this graph is wrong. This is force, and this is uh, position here. And so we're going to break these up in an infinite number of little rectangles, of course, you remember that. And this is x initial, x final. And so the work done here is just the integral of my force function. Now force has to be a function of x here uh, times all our little dx's, our little infinitesimal widths, and we have to sum all those products up, and we're going to do it between this position and this position. And, uh, you know, this now really becomes our AP physics definition of work. Um, you know, this, this implies um, this has just about everything, except we can generalize it a little bit uh, more. We can say, um, here, let me go to the new piece of paper here. We can say that work is equal to, now, I'm going to say f dot dr. Now this is the most general form. Of course we have to have our initial and our final, but this is a um, uh, a definition for work in three-dimensional space. It's force times displacements, and you're adding them all up. And of course you got this dot product thing to wor worry about. But this is the basic equation. It doesn't get more basic than this when trying to, when you're doing a work problem. So I, I will start here on, on, on the examples and then go from there. So th this is the basic equation that you use. Um, now I think m mainly for uh, the purposes of this assignment, what we did right here is really what we're going to use. But I want you to understand that this is the more general form. What I want to do right now is do example, um, do the uh, example four. And a example, oh, let's just do example four uh, from the book on page 189. Do example four. That's it for now.